uh, the first keynote speaker, Li Feng Sun from Tsinghua University, China. Uh, uh, let me briefly introduce uh, Professor Sun. Uh, he's a full professor of the Department of Computer Science and Technology at Tsinghua University. Uh, his uh, professional interests include uh, uh, various areas of like uh, video streaming, 3D video, signal processing, coding, multimedia big data, social media, and multimedia edge computing, etc. Uh, he did uh, a lot of uh, excellent work and also he got a, lo uh, a lot of uh, awards like uh, On Your Best Paper Award of IEEE Transaction Circuit System for Video Technology and Best Paper Award of ACM Multimedia and Best Student Paper Award of Multimedia Modeling, IEEE Multimedia Big Data and ACM No Stuff last year. Uh, so he's going to talk about uh, AI powered internet video streaming trends, challenges and practices today. So uh, I would like to ask all the participants to uh, make a lot of questions. Uh, uh, and uh, you can on slide two, uh, uh, choose the room keynote uh, soon. And uh, also we are, we have YouTube stream on this uh, website, uh, web address. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, welcome our speaker with a big virtual hand. Uh, Li Feng, can you unmute yourself, please? Is it okay? Yeah, we can hear you now. Great. So, uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce some of our recent work on AI-powered internet streaming and the thoughts for the next step. And I will talk about why we need AI in video streaming and uh, how AI technologies can help for video streaming and uh, how we can do better. First today, let's have a quick review of the current state of internet video streaming. No doubt, video streaming is a dominant uh, traffic in the internet. What's more, according to Cisco report, in the scenario of uh, cross-sourced live streaming, the platforms like Twitch and the Quizzo <clears throat> have so uh, unprecedented growth across the world and the market will reach 50 billion by the 2025. Here, we take Quizzo as a case study, which is a top video platform in China. It provides multiple video services, including live streaming, user-generated Microsoft video, and online, online education. For micro, micro video, as the slogan said, record world, record you, there are 250 million producers generated more than 50 million pieces of UGC video content every day, which track about 300 million daily active users. For live streaming, Quaisho, during the Chinese Spring Festival 2020 live cast, Quaisho achieved about uh, seven. 780 million DAU and uh, more than 25 million concurrent users. Moreover, with the help, with the support of interactive teaching technology, nearly 1 million teachers publish educational content on Quest. During COVID-19, there are a lot of recorded courses and uh, live cast courses using Quizzle as a video platform. 
the underlying stream, stream architecture of Quattro can be modeled as these figures. Uploaded, vid uploaded video are trans transcoded to multiple bitrate in the cloud, then delivered through multiple CDN providers and uh, transmit to end user by ABR technologies. Such a system has two significant, significant features. The one is the large scale, the massive number of content user and uh, cloud or CDN servers make the system very complex. Another feature is dynamic at system level. At system level, the dynamics of system performance and the resource utilization could not meet the QoS requirement of video streaming, especially during the rough hour. Moreover, most of the widely used resource resource <coughs> gathering policy in industry is fixed or static, which could not handle well the system performance uh, dynamics. Another dynamics is from user behavior. The left figure we can see is the view access pattern. The FCC is the flash cross channel and the NC is normal channel. This high dynamic may bring great challenge for user request scheduling in CDN. The right is the broadcast behavior. The uncertainty of the individual on time and the duration make it very hard to predict the trans transcoding task in the cloud. Moreover, there are various types of video be transmitted in different scenarios and each of them have different QoS requirements, but the underlying network has little knowledge about the content type, complexity, or perceptual quality of videos. This question is similar to the video context as mentioned in, in the keynote the day before yesterday. So the major challenge of internet video streaming can be summarized as making decisions in large scale dynamic system. For details on the server side, we need to determine if we need to determine that a video should be transmitted to how many bitrate and uh, where to ex execute the transcoding task in server cluster. In network, systems schedule the user request to different uh, content provider according to user QoE requirement within the cost constraints. At client side, the player should uh, select the right bit rate according to the network, con network conditions. To make those decisions, we need to have a good perception of the environment, including system, content, and the user, and then take effective action. However, the most exist schemes use fixed, fixed heuristic based on the designer's experience and the insights, which heavily based on simplified or inaccurate model of development environment. As a result, they fail to achieve optimal performance under the actual network condition. So AI-powered perception and decision is what we need for video streaming. Recent years, AI technology, especially deep learning, succeed in many domains, share light for video streaming. For perception, deep neural network fraud have brought its powerful representation ability in computer vision and the natural language for that field. For decision, Apple and uh, Alpha Staff defeat professional human, human players, which shows that the deep reinforcement learning approach can help us make intelligent decisions in dynamic environments and uh, is widely used in resource management, wind power generation, as well as stock trading areas. 
So from our perspective, AI-powered internet video streaming means from perception intelligence to decision intelligence. For perception intelligence, a natural, language, a natural question is, can AI help us to better understand the environment? The answer is yes. Let me give some case studies. Our first try is to understand the system. The left figure is the model we use to characterize the user access pattern, which inputs the historic request of the normal and the flat core channel. The bottom figure is the model we design <clears throat> to characterize the CDN performance dynamics, which input is the historic CDN QS performance and the workload. Both these DNA based uh, prediction model performs well in the real system trace data. Therefore, we integrate this prediction model into a real scheduling framework and uh, can improve the average QE by 5% and save, greatly save the cost by 25%. Next, we attempt to uh, attempt, uh, understanding video content. In streaming scenarios, previous approach aim to transmit video streaming with high bitrate, based on the assumption that higher bitrate means higher video quality. But in fact, we find that the enhancement of bitrate and the video quality in different videos are quite different. For example, if we increase the bitrate for the first video, but we can see the perception, perceptual video quality increase little. And if we increase the bitrate for the second video, and we can see the perceptual video increase accordingly. So this indicates that we should transmit video streaming with high video quality rather than high video bitrate. The difficulty is to predict, predict the video quality online. We propose a video quality prediction network. Our goal is to predict the future video quality metrics based on historic video frame. We use CNN to extract the spatial information and uh, deploy GRU to learn the temporal information. We integrate this prediction network into a real-time video system, video streaming system. The result demonstrate that the accurate quality prediction can effectively improve average video quality of 18 to 25 percent in real-time video streaming scenarios. For the users, our first, our first try is focused on user interaction pattern, which is an important feature in live streaming. From Twitch data size, we find that a small portion of proactive Proactive users post most of the message, while most of the passive viewers watch the live, live cast but send few messages. This indicates that the, the proactive reviewers, reviewers may, may be sensitive to latency, and the, the passive users may care more about the quality. That means user QE preference. We also find that the User interaction pattern is influenced by different, <clears throat> different factors, such as channel cap. Based on the above observation, we design a DNA-based user interaction pattern prediction model to, ca to characterize the user QE preference. This model outperforms the traditional machine learning method Leveraging this prediction model, we can introduce a new match into that we call the interaction experience into the traditional QE framework. This helps to provide deep, deep service in live streaming. For example, we can select different bitrate and deliver path for users with different QE preference. 
Another observation is QE has continuity. We use the word duration as a QE metric, and we find first find to we find that modeling the QE is not so easy. First, in the left figure, we find that the relationship between QS and QE is nonlinear, and the user QE preference will change at different thresholds. The second, we find that the QE was in influenced by multiple factors, both QS and non-QS factors, such as channel type and device time, so as the middle and the right figures. To take, tackle this problem, we propose a deep FM mode, deep FM mode based uh, QE model. It is majorly composed of two components. The factorization machine component characterizes the multiple factor interaction, and the deep components characterize the nonlinear relationship. Also, this model has low computational complexity which enable it to be deployed in, uh, practically. Thus, we use this QE model to solve the QE aware scaling problem, which can improve the average QE by 8.87%. The above research works so that with the powerful representation ability of Deep neural network, we can model the environment better. And then for the decision intelligence, we may ask, can AI make decision itself? Yes, the deep reinforcement learning can help us. So what is deep reinforcement learning? I support most of our audience may may be familiar with it or have some idea about it, especially after the keynote the day before yesterday. So DRL, DRL <clears throat> use deep learning and the reinforcement learning to learn the strategy by itself. This is a typical reinforcement learning scenario. An agent to take actions in an environment which was interpreted to a reward and a representation of the state and uh, return to the agent. Here is a simple demo. A car is positioned in the two mountains. The goal is to drive up to the mountain on the right. But the engine of the car is not strong enough to climb up the mountain in one step. So the, the only way is to drive back and forth, climb the peak. By training the car, training the car by DRF method, the car can uh, solve the problem like this. In summary, deep reinforcement learning can generate magic strategy that human beings hardly achieve. However, there is, exists a lack of weakness, such as the choice of hyperparameter, lack of training efficiency, and uh, heavy rely on reward function. So more briefly, <clears throat> we hope the policy learned with DRL may be performed like this. However, in most cases, it performed like this. So the main principle is no free lunch zero. That means every method requires carefully training for adapting to the given environment. Now let's look at how deep re reinforcement learning can help timing the complexity of video transmission tasks. On the server side, we consider the transcoding task. <clears throat> First, in ABR video 
VOD streaming scenarios. Video streaming are pre-encoded to multiple, multiple bit rates. Current, uh, <coughs> current research work considers this as a nonlinear optimization problem and analyze all possible solution bit rate pair independent and pick the best pair that is close to the convex wheel as possible. This mathematical based approach suffers from high complexity and hardly identifies the underlying correlation, correlation between multiple factors. By using deep learning method, we can consider the problem from different perspectives, including video quality, network distri distributions, and uh, storage costs. Our idea is to use a neural network to determine the proper ladder, ladder for each trunk or title. A title. <clears throat> Technically, we use DRL to learn the policy where interaction with the transcoding environment without pre <clears throat> presumers to balance we attempt to balance a variety of goals, goals including maximum the perceptual video quality, increasing bandwidth utilization, and uh, reduce the cost storage overhead. We, we use the video, the video content and the current network traffic distributions and the past action as the status states. And we utilize the neural network to generate with a proper action for each resolution. Moreover, we can integrate the storage weight, which representing the importance of storage cost. We demonstrated significant improvement in average video quality, bandwidth utilization, and uh, storage overhead. Also, we show the ability to, to deploy in real world transcoding frameworks. And then how about live streaming? In live streaming scenarios, because the chatting and the interaction be, between the broadcaster and the reviewer, the live streaming have strict real-time requirements, which bring challenges for handling the transcoding cast in the cloud. To meet the real-time QS requirement, the cloud, the cloud service provider have to provide the enough compute, computing resource. But because the uncertainty and the dynamics of the transcoding workload in live streaming, providing fixed number of transcoding server would incur whether resource wastage when the workload is low or large latency when the workload is high. So the problem is how to province the right account amount of virtual machines, dynamics, and uh, schedule transcoding tasks is efficiently. To answer this question, our, we, uh, may, we aim to province the computa computing resource and the task building policy with DRL method. The goal is to meet the QoS requirement as well as saving the computational cost as, as, as much as possible. This is the framework we proposed. It's composed two, it's composed two major parts. A DRL based resource pro providing provision module and the QoS via task scaling module. We use the past workload, last active machine, virtual machine number, and the last design violate ratio as the state. For the reward, we use a penalty of 
computation cost and uh, weighted function of QoS. For the action, we determine the, the virtual machine, how many virtual machines would turn on or turn off in the next time step. This approach can achieve much better QoS with slight extra cost. And uh, only our method and the offline optimal method can meet the SRA requirement effectively. In the network, we consider the user request uh, scheduling with multiple CDN providers. With the same thought, we use CIL based method to solve this problem. This is a framework. Yes, you can see that uh, this form is uh, some, some like uh, uh, similar. <clears throat> yes, they both include the state, reward, and action. But indeed, to make this framework more efficiently, we need to carefully design each component. For the state, we use the workload information and the QoS information as the state. For the action, <clears throat> the decision space is the user distribution ratio among different CDN providers. But we can't use this decision, decision space to, uh, uh, as the action space because it is very huge to be learned efficiently. To back up this problem, we first decrease the ratio at the interval of 1%. And then each content provider has, have, has three choice, increasing the ratio by 1%, 5%, and 10% on the basis of the ratio at the previous time frame. I think there is some uh, technical problem. Uh, I guess we lost uh, speaker. Sorry. Oh yeah, he's he's back. Yeah, we we have lost uh, for some seconds. Okay. Break at this. Yeah, it was. Yes. Please continue. Yes. So we carefully design the state action and the reward. The result shows that the framework can convert fast to reach the good performance. And it can improve the average QE by 8.7%. Also, we demonstrate that the our approach have the scalability with the more CDN providers. As client side, we aim to make the ABR algorithm more practice. Here is a typical active adaptive streaming architecture. Videos are chunked and encoded at different bit rates. And then as client, it adopts ABR algorithm to choose as a bit rate according to the various, various network conditions. The most popular learning based uh, ABR algorithm is Pensive. Pensive is the first uh, work using DRL to learn ABR 
algorithm automatically through experience, as it as expected. Plaintiff outperformed other other ABR algorithm with the average QE improvement twelve to twenty five percent. However, there are two obstacles to make the learning based scheme practical. The first is how to reduce the computational cost while guaranteeing the overall performance. In practice, most of ABR algorithms run in the player to avoid additional latency communicating to the server. But the expensive computational overhead of the increasingly complex ABR algorithm present, prevents them from in, in player implementation. Here, we plot the performance relation, correlation of the performance, computational time, computation time, and the model size of current ABR algorithms. We can see that the increase, the increasing computation overhead may be may ignore the increase increased uh, performance. So our idea is to leverage the main knowledge we propose the stake, which fills buffer based approach and the learning based approach. We use deep learning to enhance the, the traditional buffer based approach and in turn using the buffer bound as the domain knowledge to reduce the computational overhead of the learning based approach. The stake is mainly composed of two parts. The basic stake will leverage deep reinforcement learning to output the buffer bound for controlling the traditional buffer based approach. The trigger, which adopts the limitation learning to train a lightweighted neural network based train detection for reducing the computational cost. By leveraging the domain knowledge, they can significant, significantly reduce the computing, computation time and the model size. Also, we find that there, there are still improvements in the green in the green range. So our next challenge or object is like this. The lessons we learned from stake design is domain knowledge is quite useful for implement, implement, implementing a good ABR algorithm. ABR task is not so complicated. A lightweighted neural network has already provided acceptable performance. The second obstacle is how to improve the learning efficiency. Prior work of learning-based ABR algorithm has shown that the learning pro process will take a long time to converge. Considering the characteristic of ABR attacks, can we precisely estimate the optimal direction of gradients to drive the model for better updating? Some, some research will demonstrate that the ABR process can be well estimated estimate by an um, offline virtual player with the complete network conditions. So our approach is to use the limitation learning method to learn the policy directly from the offline org. Different from the supervised learning, which suffer from the compounding errors, imitation learning method reproduce desired behavior while limiting expert trajectories which could not only avoid the redundant of exploitation, but also can better use the collected samples. So 
so as to improve the learning efficiency. The trace driven and uh, real world experiment demonstrate that we can achieve 1,800 fold decrease in the number of samples required and get 16 fold speed up in training time. Also, this method improves average QOE about 7.5%. So lessons we learned, that is the imitation learning method is quite suitable for training ABR algorithm. Now the, the above study show that AI technology can help us in video streaming system. And how about in real, real system? Here we give two practical implements as a client as the client side. With the outstanding Huawei engineering, we spend almost one year to deploy to deploy our DRL based uh, ABR algorithm on the state of art mobile device of Huawei, such like uh, Huawei Mate 30 and uh, P40. As it as expect, the real real world analysis shows that the performance of DRL based algorithm outperform the existing best effort schemes. Another practical implement is at the system. In order to make the low latency algorithm more easier to deploy in the system. Quite so. Proposed last last a live adaptive streaming standard. This standard this standards describe the overall framework and uh, impl implementation specification for multi multi rate adaptive streaming. And it has several advantages such as low latency easy to explain, easy to deploy, and uh, high efficiency. Finally, let's look ahead. <clears throat> Currently, to use learning-based method, we train the model and uh, deploy it separately. So it can work, but how it to be better? From our perspective, the system should be should input itself by learning from various environments continuously and efficiently. That means a knowledge embedded lifelong federated learning framework, which have two important features or ideas. The first is local adaptation. That means the shared model deployed at the front end should continuously integrate knowledge from newly incoming environments through lifelong learning. Additionally, active learning and imitation learning should be integrated for data and training efficiency. Another idea is global aggreg aggregation. The share mode in the back end should be improved through federated learning, which aggregate local trained model to get a stronger models without transmitting without transmitting the raw data in the front end. Besides, knowledge distillation would be introduced to benefit from all the previous trained models for the better for system performance. So we think this means from AI powered to AI built in. This is our related publication recent years for your reference. 
and uh, we provided some open source code of our papers. So finally, thanks of our PhD students for providing, help me providing this slide and uh, thanks Pressure and Huawei for cooperation. And thanks for all audience for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, uh, quite a number of questions. So uh, let me go through the questions for you. Uh, I sorted uh, based on the uh, thumbs. So first question is uh, from Abdelak uh, asking, most of the users are watching video contents via mobile phones. So what is the impact of running a deep learning models like ABR on smartphones with small capacity, less resources and low energy power, any potential solution? Well, actually, I think you mentioned briefly about this, but please. Okay, this is a very good question. Taking ABR as an example, we have tried to solve the problem from two directions. First one is to utilize domain knowledge. For example, as I mentioned before, the stick. We focus the, we choose the buffer-based and the learning-based approach, which heavily reduce the over, overall overhead. The second one is to use the tiny and the interpretable models for the classic machine learning method model. For example, the decision tree. We implemented the decision tree model into the mobile device and uh, found such model can achieve high QE compared with recent work. That's all. Okay. Uh... Uh, the second question is by Hadi asking, viewing conditions can have an impact on your method. Can they can be measured and added as inputs to your network and increase the QoE? Yes, viewing condition will indeed influence the error based method. Actually, as you have mentioned, we need to use the varying condition as the input for error, which enables PT to better react to environment change. Okay, the next question is also from Hadi. Uh, can we have a fully AI streaming method in the future or they're just to improve the performance of each part of the streaming. And um, this question may be related with our future views. And in our opinion, we we propose to uh, propose a framework of which integrate all AI technology in the system, both at the back end and the front end, and uh, use technology such as federated learning, we can update the shared model at front end and uh, return such as uh, model parameters to the uh, back end and uh, integrate them for a better model. That means the system at the system level, the training and uh, model fusion can combine together to make the system self-learning and uh, update online. So that uh, could be a full AI streaming framework. Okay. Uh, next question is actually by myself. Uh, uh, when we use neural networks, uh, they sometimes lack uh, explainability, meaning they're like a black box. So it's not quite straightforward uh, why the neural network makes uh, a certain decision. So uh, have you have you been any 
have been there any effort to understand the internal mechanism of a neural network for optimal streaming? Uh, I mean, by yourself or by other researchers? Yes, it's a good question. In, ac in academics, it is a hot topic recently. And uh, there have been plenty of papers focusing on explaining the deep neural network. Most of them leverage some more simple model to explain the complex DNN. For example, using linear regression or decision tree. But in industry, I don't think it is a problem since comparing to the explainable ability of the deep neural network model. We care more about the result or the outcome. Yes. Okay. Uh, next question is from Milan. Uh, in video quality research, quality scores collected uh, are collected provided by human subjects. So this is important because error or data metrics like PSNR vary across content. So in your proposed video quality, what was used as ground truth? Uh, in other video quality predict the network, we use the ground truth of the data size, such as uh, uh, provided by Netflix for the VMAP, VMAP test. And we also collect, uh, collected a large scale uh, video set and uh, use our method to, to make annotation and uh, as our ground truth. You can, uh, we, we all, we have opened this data side on the last uh, slide and you can download this for uh, reference and uh, in your resource. Uh, research work. Okay, good. Uh, next question is from Abdullah. Uh, DRA shows uh, good performance in VOD environments where many information are available in advance. So what is about low latency live streaming where only very few information are available? Hmm. I think uh, DRL method also can achieve good performance in live streaming scenarios. In my talk, uh, there are several works about the low latency li live streaming and even real time, uh, real time video communication uh, scenarios. The quark. Uh, the quark we published in SMRT Media 2018 is uh, use the video quality prediction and uh, video reinforcement network to determine the, the standard bit rate for the real time video communication uh, applications. And, uh, and uh, as I, I mentioned, the practical practical implementation with Huawei, uh, we, we deploy this real-time DRL-based uh, ABR method on the Huawei mobile phone, and uh, it can get good in, uh, performance. Okay. So uh, the next question is also from Abdullah. Uh, GRL models are too correlated and optimized to the defined reward function like QOE function. Can we optimize these models to work for various and dynamic reward functions? Yes, it's, uh, it's a problem of uh, GRL models Uh, with our ex experience, we need to uh, understand the problem deeply so, uh, so, so as to uh, design a, uh, uh, 
well worked uh, re uh, reward. And uh, there have been a lot of work solving this problem. And uh, most of them uh, in many machine learning conferences, for example, ICML MIP, and uh, maybe uh, in our network, network areas, we currently, we only use this machine learning method and uh, maybe we should uh, uh, find the initiative features of networking to, to develop the fit for a reward design method. Okay. Uh, next question is from Lucille. Uh, what do you think reinforcement learning brings for decision compared with deep learning used to learn the model to predict rewards from states and just run model predictive control for decision? And uh, for this question, I think uh, in dynamic environment, uh, use R to learn and uh, bring for decision is more uh, effectively because we have uh, we have no ideas of the network conditions or have a have a well modeling uh, have a established a model uh, before the the deep learning uh, can be used because uh, in our in our thinking that uh, the difference between network areas and uh, such like uh, computer vision area is that uh, in computer vision and uh, NPR areas, there is a good feature that is a human being. Many things we can uh, establish a good model or reference from our human behavior or uh, perception, precise, precise. But in network uh, areas, uh, we have no ground truth or knowledge about the, how network will be and with, with the action or decision. So <clears throat> our based method may be more efficient, more efficient in the, in the dynamic environment. Okay. Uh, next, next question is from Miguel. Uh, when you compare imitation learning with supervised learning, how complex is the supervised learning model? Is it a uh, deep neural network? Uh, does it contain recurrent neural networks? Uh, this is a good question, actually. Uh, the difference between limitation learning and the supervised learning is not the DNA structure. It is the training method. Maybe you can find the details in our paper. Both these methods are used, uh, used to, to improve the training efficiency and can be integrated in the uh, DL or R framework. Okay, so I think this is the last question. Uh, can you provide further details about the live adaptive streaming standard you mentioned in one of your last slides? Oh, okay. Um, this is a standard board come from uh, Kaiso and it's a, it's a industry 
object uh, in standard world. For quite so, uh, <clears throat> their main service is uh, live streaming and uh, in their operation, they find that uh, low latency algorithm should be uh, integrated into the whole system easily. For example, if there is a new algorithm, they can be deployed and uh, uh, run with uh, uh, quickly integrated. So they aim at <clears throat> they aim at the uh, they aim to establish such a uh, standard for live adaptive streaming, and they will. Uh, they will open the course soon. And may, if you have, have you interest in, maybe you can care about, about this. Okay, uh, I think that's it for this session. Uh, it's exactly uh, the time. So, uh, well, uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Sun, uh, let's give him again a big virtual hand. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it.